Hello YouTube and welcome to a brand new Unity 3D tutorial. So what I'm going to do in this tutorial is actually make a mission in order to collect a spaceship so we've got some kind of story to our game. So the way I want to get around it is if I just stretch this out so you can actually see and stretch this one out like so and stretch this up. So we have number two mission here which well basically number one says collect apples that's that's it. Number two is sort the bandits out, which you go and kill some bandits on the land mission. It gives you 300 gold. But then what I want straight from that is another scroll to pop up. So you use that scroll, you talk to the farmer. When you've talked to him, this scroll pops up here. And it's a continuous mission. So what we're going to do is make it so at the moment you cannot use your spaceship. You can't go into space because you don't have a spaceship from beginning of game. You need to get it. So what we're going to say is visit the ship dealer. Wow, I can't believe... The way it's going to be said is in your, you've killed the bandits, gone up to the person who needs help, and this is what he's saying, like an RPG game. And he's saying, wow, I can't believe you did that. Those bandits have been harassing me for ages. Go and visit the ship dealer. Go visit the ship dealer and say, I sent you. He will reward you handsomely. I am so happy. Your mission, visit the ship dealer. Reward, a spaceship. So you go and visit the ship dealer and basically, because what I want to do is make it so you can buy ships from land and it ports it to space kind of thing. So you visit the ship dealer, then what he does is basically says, have a free ship. It's only a basic one, but have one. And that's where you get the scrim mission, the ship. I think it was the scrim ship. If we go ship stats here, the skew, that's it. You get that one for free pretty much. So what I'm going to do in Entity Stats first is find player and set their current ship here to um, none. And the reason it's going to be none is pretty much because when you put null, well if you don't put anything in it, it can be two things. It can be two speech marks, so empty ones, or it can be null and it's kind of annoying. So if you just put none and just check if it equals none then you're okay. So. That mission scroll is available in the description. What I'm first going to do is duplicate the materials and copy the name and paste it in just so we've got a material for it. And let's just organise all this back neatly. And then put number three on there and then we've got the scroll for it. So we've got all that sorted. So now that we've done that, we can actually go back to our land um, because that's where we need to primarily work for it. But this is technically a space tutorial, that's why I'm calling it space but yeah so we'll go back to our levels which I usually call scenes and we'll go to level one so this scroll which is on level one if you haven't ever seen my level game you need a land game you can do this otherwise though if I find the wall of all mega power where are our scrolls gone well we've got to find other scrolls so they're inside landscapes, wall, missions, and there they are. So I'm going to enable both of them and we may get errors we have to fix. But if we just F on one, oh dear, it's not liking that at all. So if I just go in and get, ah, that's why, get that one then. So the bandits are over there. So we do that mission, it's okay. We do the bandits mission here and it should, we need to change this one basically to show the correct one. So what I'm going to do is go to zero two here and I'm going to open it up. So what we're going to do is find the end to it, so when we win, pretty much. So if you scroll all the way down, and you want, if bandit's alive, this one here. Mission complete. Perfect. That's what we want. But what we also want is this thing down here. So where it says the scroll, we're pretty much going to change that to the next one. It's really, really simple. But we want, this, we want it on another script, otherwise we'll be having two scripts and it won't be right. So what we're going to do is actually on mission 2 active here, we're going to duplicate it and go inside and delete the bandits because we don't need them. And I'm going to rename this one to the correct naming pretty much. So what I'm going to do is name it to whenever I find our missions here. So I'm going to get the name of it and rename it to this because now we can pretty much just map everything. So it needs the correct material which is number 3. So now it says it. Of course it needs to be moved across, but the thing is we don't actually need a texture on it. So I'm going to delete the box collider and delete the cute, the mesh renderer. Completely delete it because it's not an actual mission you can see. You've got to do it. It's kind of repetitive if you wish. So 
we can also get rid of number two, mission scroll, just so it's a basic empty game object called that. I probably would have been faster just making a game object, but hey. So we do need the scroll though for when the GUI starts, but yeah. So if we click number two and find the script here, we can duplicate it and rename it to number three. Then stick it on number three, like so. So let's go into it. There's some stuff we've got to clear out, some stuff we've got to change. So what we're going to do is begin taking out the aspects of this, this mission, which we don't need. Um, if you haven't done this mission, you need to kind of go back because I'm not going to rewrite it because there's no real point, but yeah. So anything to do with bandits alive, we pretty much need to get rid of. So all this, well, we'll start at the top. So we don't need that variable. We don't need mission active on because... Um, the player's not going to have a choice in it, it's going to be kind of a follow-on mission, you've got to do it once you've started it. So we're going to get rid of that, and all this range detection inside here. We don't need this one here, so we can get rid. And rightfully, this mission scroll needs to start on true. And the reason it's going to start on true is because all we're going to do is enable this 03 mission ship script, and from number 2, so when you finish it, it enables it. So when it default enables it, mission score is going to be true, it'll show the GUI, and then as soon as you click um, get rid of the cancel, yeah, get rid of the cancel. As soon as you click begin quest, it's going to turn it off, pretty much, like that. So, we've got the default GUI showing, so as soon as it's enabled, it shows it. We don't need the bandits scroll anymore, or the game object, because there's no bandits. We don't actually need the character either, because we're not using the range detection, so we can get rid of that. And we don't even need in range, so we can get rid of that as well. So, three variables, mission scroll, boolean, which I will set now, boolean. Um, it's good practice to always set it as a boolean, because then if you ever switch to C-sharp, you have to just and it say what type it is. The only reason we can get away with not typing it is because of this line here. If you didn't have that, you will get to errors if you've not done it. Input text for our GUI text is that one there. We need that to say mission complete, mission fails, stuff like that. Then the scroll is the texture for the GUI, so we need that as well. So if mission active, which we don't have, so just to save booleans, we can use mission scroll and say false. So if it equals false, aka we've clicked begin mission, then we need to begin actually doing it. So, so easiest way to do this would be using our entity stats. So if we go back to our character, miss scripts, and entity stats here, we can see if we go through to this and find player, we can find the current ship. So at the moment it equals none. So we we simply say if starts.player.currentship does not equal none, then we can, well, he's, that means he's bought a ship, correct? So that means we can carry on. So if we get rid of all this and leave the if bandits alive there for now, in fact, get rid of all this and put it here. So if gameobject.find misc scripts, I believe it doesn't have an underscore, correct? So if gameobject.miss scripts, bracket dot get component bracket and what should we say entity stats dot player dot current ship and is it a capital P for player it is we got it right dot current ship does not equal so it's exclamation mark equals none so if it doesn't equal none that means he's bought a ship aka he's finished this mission so it can carry on easy enough so let's see. So we don't need to turn mission active off. We can get rid of that. So the script that we need to actually delete is, well, the game object, what we've got, which is mission 03 here. So we just get that and we attach it to that. So we, we could just relatively put game object dot destroy this or destroy dot this, but I'm going to keep it like just in case. So we've got mission complete. We need that. That's correct. Then we've got that which enables the input or active. We need that as well because that shows our little subtitle at the bottom if you wish. And then player's money. Well, we don't really get money from it. We get a ship from it. 
So we're just going to get rid. That's it. So as soon as you go and buy a ship, it's mission complete. That's it. And that's that mission pretty much done. That's it. That mission's done. So when we go to number two, we need to enable it, which is pretty simple. We can do that in a minute. But it does. it isn't going to say mission complete anymore. Because yes, we've completed the mission, but we've also got a new objective. So we can get rid of this and put new, in fact, we can put mission complete, new objective, and then after we can put, um, go to the, what should we say? Hmm. What to say? In fact, I've got a better idea. Just put mission complete, just like that. I know this is getting confusing. But then what we're going to do is copy this input.txt here and the active and place it inside this button. So it'll show mission complete when you complete that mission. Then when you complete that mission, it'll show this scroll, which is good. It'll say it says mission complete. Then what it'll do is when you click begin quest, it'll show here new objective, objective, visit the ship dealer. And then it'll show a new objective. And then when we go to the ship dealer and buy a ship, it says mission complete. Perfect. So what we're going to do now is actually enable this script. Really simple. So I'm going to go back to our game and actually disable it on the Zero Mission 3 thing. We're not going to disable that, otherwise we can't find it. But if you disable the script, then all it is a case of just enabling it. So what I'm going to do is I actually need to assign these variables because I know we'll forget later. So number three will be the scroll, easy enough. And the GUI text will be in our HUDs and player information panel, there. So now it's got the things to show it. So we're gonna go back to mission two scroll here, and where it says mission complete and destroy it, before it destroys it, we're gonna go above it and type, not that, game object dot find zero three buy ship dot get component and I believe it was called the exact same. So, 03 mission get component dot enabled equals true. So this may throw an error, seeing as it's got a number on it. I'm not 100% sure, so we may have to change that. So as you can see, it found an error with the numbers. So we can try putting speech marks there, but I don't think it will help. But if it does, we're all good. So, because we can't do that, we need to actually change it, so get rid of the number. So, what we can do instead, is instead of calling it 03 mission script, we can call it third, or yeah, third, because it's not liking it. This one we'll call second, and this one we'll call first. However, the actual game objects we can keep named as numbers, but it's just a little annoyance what we have to put up with. So we can com come back, and it does not like it, so don't keep an editor, don't keep an editor. We have to go back and find the, where is it? The third mission script and the second one, here and here. So where it says it does not like it, which is here, we can simply rename it to third mission. So it doesn't like numbers, remember, just like variables, so we have to change it. So you kill the bandits, it comes on, it enables that script, which by default, it shows the GUI, you click begin, it says mission objective. Easy enough. So, let's test our theory for now. So I'm going to click play, and you see we instantly get an error right here. So the first mission, we get lots and lots and lots and lots of errors. So if I pause it, we should be able to see. So it's all mission one, and we've got a couple of mission twos. So mail ship shop is got an error there, so we can just get rid of that. Easy enough. So right here, we have collect five apples line 20. So let's have a look what's on there. So line 20 is here. Game object that will find farmer, which it can't find farmer. So we could we could go against this by saying game object that will find father. So let's copy all this, farmer. And we'll type if game object that will find farmer does not equal null. So basically, if it can't find it. So if it can't find the farmer, then it's not going to perform this code, otherwise it will. Easy enough. So what we also need could do is if we copy all this and paste it in front of this and put and and. 
And what that'll do, instead of saying, if it, the farmer's dead, so if his life's dead, destroy the script, or if he's disappeared, destroy the script. So if he's there, or if he's dead, it'll destroy the script either way. So that's what we want. So if you click play and click play again, it should say, oh, no, sorry, can't find the farmer, destroy this script. Hopefully. There we go, so it's destroyed it, which it's meant... Okay, no, it's not. Confusing, but okay. So, there's our guy, so we need to run all the way back down here. So what I'm going to do is stop it, and I'll come back when I'm actually at the wall. So I'm here, so we can walk up to number two, and it'll say Q to activate mission. So take out the bandits, blah, 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 so begin quest. So it's just normal. We have to go and find the bandits. So I'm going to go over here and destroy the bandits, because that's what we're going to do. They've all fell down, that's going to make it hard. So instead what I'm going to do is cheat at it, so I'm going to go and find number two and destroy the bandits. And it should say return to the farmer. So game object type is destroyed but you're still trying to access it. So what I ended up doing was going through all the bandits and just literally changing their life to zero. Mission complete. So it shows that. We could make it so you have to go and visit the new person to say you've finished like we did on the first mission. But we can do that later. So it says visit ship dealer blah blah so begin quest. And it says complete already. And I'm guessing it says complete because if we go to our scripts our current ship is the skew. So if it wasn't the skew which it actually needs to be none which we didn't change in the script so if we go back to entity stats find our character and change our ship to none the reason it worked on the land the space one is because we did it in the inspector so click refresh as you can see we have none perfect so that's what we're going to do for this tutorial what we're going to work on next time is land properly land not space land, but then we, we probably need to get a ship dealer up and running soon, so we'll probably do him. So it waits for you to go to back to another character, lets you walk up to the ship dealer. So when you talk to him, he gives you a ship, pretty much instant. Then you can activate space, because we need to make sure if you haven't got a space, you can't go to space. Otherwise, it's thrown out. So, really simple to do again. Next tutorial, I'm thinking we'll probably work on some animations for our character, I'm not 100% sure. But thank you for watching, I really hope you liked it. Please join my Facebook group below, Twitter's also there if you want to hit me up on that. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.